everybody, Adam Savage at Prop Store in London. I always want to say Prop Store of London. I had to work hard to remove that. <laughs> the rest gone, man. But we are in that. London. We're in London at Prop Store. Stephen Lane, how are you? I'm very good, thanks, man. Very good. You guys have an auction this fall. It's happening right now, and it has some insane things in it. But this is the dropship from Aliens. This is the dropship from Aliens. You're right. Actually, you know what? This year we have a really amazing collection of Aliens content as well. We've got Harry Harris archive. His collection is in this, which has brought a lot to market that's never been oh, seen wow. for years, years and years and years. But this piece, you know, a model miniature with this sort of hardware on it, it's, it's a phenomenal item, built by the Skotap brothers, of course, and uh, it just sort of sings out Aliens, doesn't it? I mean, this is Aliens is so much about the hardware, and it's just like this particular piece, man. Well, a Aliens is about the hardware, and it's also about Jim Cameron's intersection with the hardware, because I know that he built the maquette of this. That's right. Uh, famously grabbing Black Hawk helicopters and other model parts and cobbling together, because he's an excellent maker and illustrator, his version of what the dropship should look like. Yeah, but look at the detail on this thing. Isn't it just amazing? I mean, if you it's just starting at the front here, you've got Ferro and Spunkmeyer, the pilots in there, and co-pilots sitting in there all, all ready to go. You've got the, the, the decal on the side, which says Smart Ass, I think it is, around on yep, this side yep. here. And actually, uh, I've had uh, decals like these come from other sources over the years, because they, they obviously just interchanged this between the Smart Ass and the Bug Stomper, oh, so that you know did. one model just yeah. flip it over as they needed to for, for uh, different shots to save on the money. The rivet work on this is really beautiful and sensitive. Uh, it's just such a thrill to see this thing up close. And this is a big shooting miniature. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it's a bigature, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it's not far off it at all. I mean, this this would be a multi-purpose, I think. You know, if you look at it uh, and the way that it's sort of been pieced together, it looks like there's a, a motion control mounting point right through here or a filming mounting point through here. I know there's another one in the tail section. Obviously, we've got one on the underside. So this thing is designed to be shot from all different angles and all different sides. And in fact, you've got sort of holes in different places as well. Maybe yeah, it's been yeah. suspended. Oh, there was a light over here, so maybe a red LED right. went could have there. Been, could have been an LED there as well, but yeah, I mean, it's just, and look at the paintwork on this, sort of distressing and just the aging that's gone into it as well, over the O2 here and around that area, it's just wicked. It is also, for the age that it is, it is in a remarkable shape. It's in it's in good shape. You're right, and and interestingly enough, when this was when this last came to market, actually this part, the cockpit section, was actually separate. So it got sold at one point with a replica cockpit, oh. and then this went out <gasps> somewhere else. And the existed the current owner of this actually managed to bring those two pieces back together again, which is great to see. That's amazing. I was going to say these two screws up here at the top of the cockpit look a little new. <laughs> They're a little bit evident, aren't they? Yeah, I don't think it would have been allowed on set like that. And it has had some other restoration work that's been done to it as well over the years. But you know, you consider the size of this and the age of this, it's not surprising. But it's it's no. it's main, maintained it, hasn't it? Really, as much as anything else, managed to to keep it alive. I, well, I mean, I I notice how little like things there are on the edges, which is usually where I see a lot of the weathering, right? Or whether it's where someone's handled it. And this has clearly been loved. It has been loved. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the pods on the top here, I won't move them now, but they're hinged so they will fold in over each other. <sighs> so they sort of give that closed effect as well, which is really cool. It's missing the, the gun ports that would go here. Yes, yeah, it looks, yeah, if, actually if you get underneath there, I yeah. think you can actually see where they were once bonded, can't uh -huh. you? Yeah, uh -huh. so, so you've got them bonded uh, all, the, all the, the marks there. Yeah, you've got the landing. the landing the landing gear on that as well. Some of the electrics hanging out on oh, the underside neat, here. Neat, neat. Yeah, and so I mean, it, this had lights throughout it. So you have lights to the front. You've got engine lights to the rear as well. And it's sort of pretty. In fact, that's the. Oh, red, I bet that's, that's the, the ball that goes in that hole in there. there. Nicely done. That's Did some problem solving on the clock today. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. Yes, that's where that LED is. But you can see you've got like a steel armature that goes right up through the underside of it there as well, giving it its core strength so that it allows it to be filmed from all these different angles, which is uh, obviously so important to it. I just delight in how um, crude and crunchy the inside of spaceship models are. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's a, it is just, it's all business in here, yeah. right? Yeah. There's no, nobody's trying to prove anything. No, no, absolutely. And you sort of see that as well with the engines on the rear, don't you? I mean, it's just oh, sort of yeah. like, yeah, let's, let's have a look. look at that. Because I think when you when you come around to the back there and look at the engines, I mean, it's just a... These guys here. Yeah. This is crazy looking. <laughs> it's just a, like a halogen 
light in the back of there, isn't it? Yeah. Just sort of drilled out and tapped out to give it enough light so it's going to emanate out the back of the uh, out the back of the craft. And but these, it's just... these, I think these are MR16s. These halogens, they burn hot. They're hot. Like yeah. super hot. Yeah, and whenever yeah. I see them in spaceship models, I'm all like, oh man, you poor bastards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I mean, that's something that with technology has really helped now, hasn't it? With LED and cold light technology, it just means that everything is possible that wasn't possible previously. No, I know. worked in film just before uh, Kino fluorescents became uh, uh, in heavy use. And so every Every set I was on for the first few years was hot as, you know, it was crazy. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, this is just, oh, it is such an iconic piece. Yeah, you got like, all this sort of pin lining and decals on the top of it here as well. We're sort of detailing yeah. again, all the riveting on the on the wings over here as well, yes. on the back fins, haven't you? It's just amazing. Oh, man. You know, how much is that ever going to be seen in shot? But it just adds so much depth and breadth to it, doesn't it? It really does. And you know, when light goes over it, all of a sudden, all that detail tells a much greater story. All gets picked up. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, I loved it. I didn't realize it had been built by the Skotak brothers. That's a, lo that's a lovely lineage too. Oh, yeah, you got your jet blast uh, decal there. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, another part of the landing gear there, yep. which I'm sure at one point would have been practical. It looks like it's sort of just clipped in place here, okay. isn't it? Really, quite basically. And then, well, clearly they only intended ever to shoot this from the front. They yeah. didn't need to bury that. That's right. Right. So they're just like, ah, That's it just true. shows up at the bottom. We don't need to. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. Which is great. That's fantastic. Uh, the auction is happening right now. It is. Yeah, it's live online right now. So there's over 1,500 lots from over 350 film and television shows, which is quite an astonishing uh, volume of content. It's also pieces in there to suit all budgets as well. So starting from a couple of hundred bucks and upwards. And it's really worth just checking out at propstore.com and, and tune in for auction day as well. We're live stream every single day. You could add a drop ship to your home collection right now. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, sir. It's been a pleasure, man. Lovely to see you. Such a pleasure.